Uh, welcome to my talk. Um, it's about uh, upcoming features in the FreeBSD Ports 3. Uh, my name is Pierre Gazzi. Uh, I'm a FreeBSD Ports committer. And this talk is more a demonstration how the new features will look like. It's not a technical talk, so it's more like a hands-on, at least for me, because <laughs> I'm showing, or I'm going to show uh, some demonstrations. Um, let's have the following situation. You are a speaker and you have to prepare your slides for a conference next morning. And uh, you need, for example, LaTeX Beamer. And yeah, you don't have time to compile it, so you use binary packages, from which are available on our uh, FTP mirrors. Um, yeah, in this uh, example, I used uh, Thunderbird. Just download the package. Um, package. Uh, execute package add and it will not work or most of the time it will not work because we see here um, there are some dependency problems. The a common workaround for this problem is just use the force flag, install it somehow <laughs> and hope that it will work. If uh, yeah, you have older packages on your system, um, some shared library missing or old version, it probably will not work. But there are more problems in this example. Um, the first one are the package tools. Um, our package tools are quite old. They have some rough edges. They work most of the time, but yeah, there are common uh, or well-known problems. Also, they are not very well maintained and pretty outdated. The other one are the package dependencies. So if you installed your uh, system six months ago and you like to uh, add a new package, it probably the dependency of the new package will not uh, fit or the, the old, the installed packages will not uh, work together. And the third one, that our uh, packages are uh, built on a best effort base. So if someone from Port Manager has time and there is, the cluster is free, he builds packages and uploads it to the mirror sites. And th you, you also don't know if you download a package um, from when it was built, so maybe it's outdated, maybe not. So, but we have a solution for all of these problems. The first one is uh, PackageNG. It's a next generation package framework. Um, it's, um, you, there is a wiki page which uh, has a quite a good ov overview over uh, PackageNG, and it's a replacement for the current package tools we have in base. There is only one tool, it's package, and you can uh, call different subcommands. Um, everything is uh, described in man pages, and you have the, the main man page package, and also uh, man pages for all the subcommands. For example, for package install, it's uh, package dash install and so on. Package NG is not a port uh, management tool. So Package NG doesn't work with the port tree. It, it really is a, a tool for binary packages. And it's also, because, because of that, it's not a replacement for port upgrade or port master. If you want to upgrade your installed uh, ports from the port tree. Package NG is, as I said, a replacement for the old package tools, which currently still are in base. And it's also a tool to uh, query, uh, query and manage the installed package. Um, package NG is a pretty sophisticated um, uh, querying uh, mechanism, so you can query almost everything um, about a package. I will show you that later. As I said, it's, it only deals with uh, binary packages. No, it has nothing to do with the port tree. The port tree is to build the packages. And it's a tool to upgrade or install your system from a remote repository. So there will be uh, remote repositories with all the packages uh, on it and you can upgrade or install from there. And it's also a library uh, for package management. So if you like to write a shiny GUI for your uh, package uh, administration, um, use the library from PackageNG. And all the magic behind uh, is done by PackageNG. PackageNG new, uh, uses a new uh, package format. So you can't use our current packages with PackageNG. The packages are uh, compressed with XZ 
and the whole metadata of a, uh, of a package is in this uh, manifest file. So we will have a look at how a manifest file will look like. It's, yeah, it's the name of the package, the version, from which port it was built from, it's okay, that's common. And now this is one of the new features. A package in G is aware of the archite architecture and the ABI. Because with the old package tool, it was possible to install a Spark 64 package on an AMD 64 system. It probably will not work. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, but probably for ARM you don't use the, or I, I don't, maybe people will use, but I don't think so. This also, package in G is uh, aware of prefix, so if you want, you can build your own packages in slash opt or whatever uh, pass you like. It also knows about the license, about the size of the package. With our current package, yeah, you probably see it when you download it, but you don't know uh, if it is extracted, how many disk space it will use. You have a uh, description, all the dependencies, category, and now this is also new. You know the options with which a package was built. Currently, if you download the package, you have no idea with which option, probably with the default one, but yeah, it's just a guess. Um, there are also, the, you see all the files with checksum, the directories, and now you have the, the, the inst if a package um, uh, calls some scripts during the installation or deinstallation, it's also in the manifest. And all these information are stored if you install the package, so you can query all these information afterwards with a package query. So let's switch back. Um, the old package um, tools use the directories and file structure to store the information what is installed on the system. The package in G uses a local database, it's a SQLite database, and it's also stored in var db package. And it's no longer or yeah, not so easy possible to query the database itself as it was possible to grab over the var db package. But you have all these uh, tools provided by package and G. So it's no longer possible, uh, necessary. There is also on the other side, on the mirrors, there is now a repository. It's a, also a compressed SQLite database with information about all packages which are available. So first you download this uh, repository and then you have all the information about the other side. Um, there is already a public repository available. Um, it's also on a best effort base, but yeah, you can take a look at it and try it out. It's packagebeta.freebsd.org. Um, if you like to work with uh, PackageNG, there is a Git repository. You can check out the sources from there, or you can install it from ports. It's uh, in ports management package install. Uh, a package, just um, type make install and convert your current system with the old um, package format and it will work. And I will show how this works. Because there is a tool package to ng which um, uh, uh, takes all the situation at, uh, information about the current system and converts it into the new um, uh, package ng database. After that, you have to enable package ng support in your etc make.conf. And then you might want to uh, delete the old files in uh, var db package because you know delete the information. But don't delete the local SQLite because that's your package database for package ng. So I'm now going to convert a system. This is my uh, package. And this is my box I used to uh, prepare the slides. Um, I have a little cheat sheet here to avoid typos. So let's you oh, oh Mac. For, first of all, we install package ng. 
it's already pre-built on this system, so now package ng is installed. We already have the package command after rehashing, of course. We already have the package command here. Now we converted our current system with package to ng. That takes some time because it uh, needs to uh, get all the information from the current system and converts it into this database. We can see, you see this um, error messages. This is not a feature of package ng. It's a problem of the system because I have an experimental patch installed, but it will work. <laughs> really, I tried it. I tried it this morning. So this will take a minute. Pardon? No, nothing. It, it just uh, gets the information from war DB package about the. Why does it write that uh, it's installing something? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost on every line. Yeah, maybe it, it, uh, it registers it in the database and okay. the output of that is installing. I don't know. So that was fast this morning. So now we're finished. And now you see there is this local SQLite database. You now can delete all the other directories with the old informations in it. The next step is to enable package ng support in your make.conf. And now we can all, uh, no, that's, let's use the cheat sheet. You can query um, your uh, database. So I'd like to see um, which version of a LaTeX Beamer I've installed and I can use package info. Or I'd like to show which um, uh, packages are outdated on this system. So it says, yeah, for example, TIFF has an update, so I might want to uh, update this. It's also, this was uh, also possible with the, with the old tools, so that's nothing new. You can also query which uh, uh, file was installed by which package. And now there is the new stuff. We first um, um, choose a package site for our remote repository. I use this uh, package beta in this example. So I just add the package, uh, the package site, the, the URL in my package.conf. Now I can download the repository. It's now downloads this uh, compressed SQLite database and installs it on the, this system. And after that, I'm able to query the remote repository. Installed. That was fast this morning too. <laughs> So what we're, when the download is finished, what we're going to do, we're going to search for a, a certain package in the remote repository and install it from there. So the download is finished now, it extracts the database, and now we're able to query the remote repository. So in this example, I was looking for a Poudrier on the remote repository, and the remote repository has this Poudrier version 1.1. So let's install it from the remote repository. And now we, have, we already have the information from the remote repository, so we know we have to download 16 kilobytes. And yes, we want to install it. And we also know the uh, required disk space. In this example, it's not that big. So it 
download the package, make some checks, and install it. So now we can use a simple example of package query. Um, there are really, if you look at the man page uh, package dash query, there are a lot of different options to query the database. Uh, you can, if you like to script, you can script almost everything. So we now see package Poudrier in the version 1.1 is installed and it uses uh, 37 kilobytes. We've seen that information before, but that was, um, yeah, just an example. And what is possible now, we can create a package, a package out of the, in, uh, the installed files. So I'd like to um, create a backup package of this Poudrier in slash TMP. So I just type package create and it creates a package in slash TMP. So if I delete Poudrier now, yes, I'm able to reinstall it from the local created package. There's also, there was, or there were some concerns because the day, uh, the, the, all the information are stored in a local database. There is also a way to backup this database. It's a package backup and just um, define a pass and it dumps the database. So you can uh, add a cron which does that on frequent base or something like that. And there is also a possibility to restore the database. It's just, takes all the information out of our backup files and restore it into the database. So, restore done. And there's also, a, uh, if you work with the port tree, you probably know port audit. Uh, it's a tool which uh, has uh, known, uh, known vulnerabilities of, uh, of packages um, documented. Uh, package uh, NG also has a possibility to use this feature. You just uh, type package audit minus F for fetch, and it will, it will fetch the, la uh, the latest um, vulnerability database, and now we see that there is a known vulnerability in free type on this system. So, time to upgrade our system, because we already have the information about the remote repository, we can just um, execute package updating, and now we see which uh, packages are will be updated. So this free type, which has a vulnerability, so yes, please. And it fetches the remote packages and uh, updates your system. What is the first time package? Yeah, um, good question. <laughs> it's beta. <laughs> and in the end, you see the package messages of all the installed uh, uh, package. In this, uh, example we already converted, so that's not a problem. There is also, the, in the port tree, there is the file updating. If you update a port and it needs a manual interaction, it's documented there. So if you update, uh, for example, Postgres SQL to a higher version, you have to dump and restore. And this is uh, documented in, in this file. And uh, PackageNG also has the possibility to uh, query this file and uh, check which entries in this file are related to your system. So we just want to look and we see there is one updating entry from 2009 in JPEG and another one in LibXCB from 2009. So that probably um, is not applicable for our system here. Also, if you use a up-to-date current, so um, which is newer, uh, yeah, probably it has to be um, from the last month, you even don't know, uh, need a port tree to bootstrap package NG because there is a web wrapper in base which, with which you can uh, bootstrap package NG. And it uh, also uh, installs a default package conf with the mirror um, configured. So let's bootstrap a fresh current. This is a current CD from last week. I just installed it and it's mm, package info, it's nothing installed. So let's try package info from package ng, and package ng wasn't there, oh, it bootstraps. So it installs package ng, and now 
packaging G is bootstrapped. So the next you can just there was already a default package conf uh, installed, which points to a remote repository. So you can now just uh, execute package update again to download the remote database. And you're able to install software on the fly. Yes. Then uh, you try to install uh, something, but uh, you're, it's, uh, it's desynchronized with the, the remote one. So you, you try to install uh, um, a version, but uh, uh, you got uh, an updated, a more updated uh, repository online. We will see that in a couple of seconds. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is solved with package sets. We'll see that. Yes. Yes, but only only for this. But you can uh, you can query the the remote repository. It's also possible because you already have this information on your uh, system. Um, if you work with Portmaster to update your ports, um, there is a patch available uh, to enable package and G support. It's on GitHub, and you have to patch uh, Portmaster and then enable it in Portmaster RC. And after that, Portmaster is aware of package and G. You can even um, uh, upgrade, uh, update package and G itself with Portmaster. So um, I'm looking forward that this patch will be merged into the official. Uh, portmaster, but I don't know the status there. Um, now to your problem. <laughs> um, on on the current um, uh, FTP uh, mirrors, you have an uploaded set of packages, and you don't know from when they were, and if you installed it uh, yeah, six months ago, and you like to. Uh, install something new from the same view, probably there, there are different packages on the mirror. And this will be solved with package sets. So package sets are a, a, sna a snapshot of the current ports or packages build of a snapshot of the current ports and they have a different retention time. So you know when this uh, snapshot was uploaded, it will be there for X months or something like that. So let's have an example from the package beta size. Um, we see there are three different uh, package sets upload and there is always a latest link. So if you always want the latest and greatest and newest uh, package, just point to the latest link. You have to upgrade uh, more often because the package will change, but that's not a problem with package G. If you want to have something stable, so you say, yeah, I'd like to have this package set for the next six months and install that, you can choose one of the, the other ones. You point directly to one of the package sets. There is not a defined policy yet how the package sets will look like, but that's, this is one of the possibilities. So that we will provide weekly package sets, which are uploaded to uh, the mirrors, which will be there for two months. And there will be monthly package sets will, which will be uh, available for a year. So you can say if I, if I want my system the next year, and I always like to choose the package from the same package sets. Point to one of the monthly package sets, and you will have your package with the right dependencies for 12 months. If you want a newer version, then choose a newer package set, type package update to fetch the remote repository, package upgrade, and you're on the newer package set. So, now we have a Package G, the possibility to uh, to upgrade with binary packages with remote repositories, but you might want to uh, create your own packages. And this is a Bourier is a new tool. It, this one is already in uh, uh, the previous port three. It's uh, 
it's a tool for testing package production for maintainer or committers, but it's also possible to uh, build uh, ports to uh, upload it to a mirror or something like that. Um, it is able to build packages of for different versions of FreeBSD. It's like Tinderbox, probably well known also. Um, it's able to build uh, i386 packages on AMD64. And it creates the package layout as it is on the official mirrors. So you can have, afterwards you can have your uh, web server or FTP server pointing to that directory and it already has the structure. So this means that uh, um, package ng and also but also port master is able to work with this repository. Um, the main advantage, in my opinion, uh, is that Poudrier only depends on. Uh, uh, tools in ports, uh, in, in base. So if you install Tinderbox, which is another tool to uh, create packages, you have to install a um, SQL database, um, probably a web server, and so on, and uh, installation is pretty complicated. With uh, Poudrier, you only need CFS and jails. There is no database required. So we now use, of course, PackageNG to install Poudrier. Um, it's there. You have to create a config file for it, it's pretty simple, and then just add a jail for the version you like to build package for, and download the port tree. The jail is, um, uh, he fetches, or Poudrier fetches uh, the, um, the needed uh, files from the FTP mirrors, and the ports are extracted with a port snap. So you don't, uh, you also don't need other uh, tools than are available in base. So let's create packages for package-ng with Poudrier. You just have to uh, enable with package-ng again in make.conf and define all the ports you like to build in a random file. And then say, let's build all these ports and it will create packages uh, for you and also a package-ng repository database. Um, here is the website of uh, Poudrier. There are a lot more of uh, information there. So let's create the package-ng repository with Poudrier. So I already installed Poudrier on the system. It's uh, more or less up-to-date current. Um, it needs CFS, so I have this uh, set pool here. The name of it is tank. And I added this information in the Poudrier.conf. I just defined the set pool to use and the FTP host from which he downloads the, the needed, pack, uh, the needed um, uh, uh, packages, so uh, um, tarballs to extract the base system. I also, in this example, I created a, a custom resolve config for the jails, but yeah. And then we add or we enable. Oh, we enable um, package ng support in the make conf of our jail. We like to build package ng um, packages for. And then I'd like to, in this example, just I'd like to build one port with uh, package ng, but you can define um, as many ports as you want in this file. So I want uh, ports opt from, uh, uh, yeah, from the ports management category. And then just use the bulk build, say the file, uh, build all the packages from this file for um, FreeBSD 8.2 on AMD64, and it starts to build the package. Once all packages are built, it will also create a package ng repository. So in the end, you can just point your web server, FTP server, to this directory, um, add the the URL of this repository in your local machines as a package site, run package updating, and then the package ng knows about this new repository and can install and update packages from there. Finished. 
now it creates a package for package ng first, of course, and now it creates a package for ports opt. So we see here that it generates this uh, repo.sqlite, which is the remote repository. Now if we change to the location, we see here the layout of our FTP mirrors. And you also see this repo to uh, TXZ, which is the remote repository, this compressed SQL database. And in the all subdirectory, you see our two packages, one for package NG, NG and one for ports opt, which I built the package for. There's also Tinderbox. This is all the tool to build uh, packages. There is um, recently uh, package ng support was added. It's if you use the CVS versions, probably most committers use CVS versions of Tinderbox. Um, package ng support is in both branches. Um, if you use uh, the port, you have to use the Tinderbox devil port, um, which includes. Uh, uh, package ng support. Um, in the next uh, release of Tinderbox, in the next official release, the um, package ng support will be included. Um, to enable it, um, you can add, you have to add two lines with package ng yes, and the package suffix is txz for the new packages. And then you're able to build a package ng packages on your Tinderbox. There is also a Tinderbox hook available to build a package ng repository. It's also in the CVS. You just have to uh, make the hook uh, executable and then add it with the update hook command, point to the, this hook, and then after each build, it will create, the, or create or update the repository. Also, Tinderbox has this FTP, this official FTP layout, so you can point your web server or uh, FTP server to this directory and yeah, you can do the same. So now for package set, it's <laughs> for package sets, we need a new VCS. Um, why? Because uh, the, one of the main reasons is tagging. With our current CVS, uh, tagging of the port tree takes too much time and uh, the, the repository is locked during this time, so commuter, commuter can't do updates. And it's also um, quite an um, excessive task for the hardware or for the resources. Um, and as we are, like to provide uh, frequent um, uh, package sets, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not convenient to lock down the ports tree every two weeks because uh, we have to tag it and build the package from there. And the other thing are repo copies. In FreeBSD, if a port is split into two new ports or there is a new version of a, a certain software and we need to create a new port out of that, we use something which, or which is called a repo copy. We do that because we want to provide the history of the whole port. So in fact, we go to the CVS repository and copy the old files to the new location so that the new ports still have this history for, from the old port. Um, currently, if, you, uh, if you're a committer and you need a repo copy, you open a problem report in our uh, bug database, assign it to a port manager, and Joe will do the uh, repo copy. Um, it works well, but it's a time-consuming consu task because, yeah, you have to um, create a, a PR, Joe needs to do it, and it probably takes from days to a week, and yeah, most committers want to do it uh, immediately. So with subversion, it is possible. And now the big question, why subversion, not another VCS? Um, with subversion, we has all the advantages we want. There is a tagging is uh, instantly, more or less. We can do a SVN move copy to do repo copies. And the disadvantages uh, are um, we don't have a, a force flag for, copy, uh, for commit. So uh, in FreeBSD, you use a force commit. So if you had a mistake in your previous commit, you. Uh, um, you do a force commit to correct the, the commit message or um, if a, um, a, a committer which uh, was in a mentorship um, becomes free, we do a force commit on an access file. This is, it is possible with subversion with the workaround, but yeah, 
it's not as easy as with uh, CVS, if you type CVS uh, CI minus F. But yeah, that's a small disadvantage. The other disadvantage is the repository growth. Our current CVS repository is about 2.2 gigs. Um, when I converted the ports tree, it's about 7 gigs. Um, if you do a git con uh, convert from the current uh, CVS repository to git, it's uh, smaller than 2 gigabytes. So, yeah, it's <laughs> the repository size is, yeah, it's a disadvantage, but um, I think for most people, it, they don't care because the repository is somewhere in the FreeBSD infrastructure. And uh, for most cases, you don't need a, co a copy of the full repository. There were also concerns about the repository grow, growth because, um, yeah, with subversion, uh, it, the, the repository grows more than with CVS. Um, I did some, uh, or I wrote a simulation which uh, simulates the, the usage of the port tree from our committers, so adding new ports, uh, removing ports, uh, move ports around, tagging. It will grow, but um, not that much. So I uh, run this simulation for, uh, it was uh, 100, 11,000 commits, which is about probably the commits, or it, which is the commits we did in the last five years, and the repository growed about one gigabyte, which is still okay. But but in my opinion, I, we had CVS for 18 years now, and I really don't think that we will have subversion for the next 18 years. So yeah. <laughs> That there will be some, maybe not in the next one or two years, probably not in the next five years, but there, there will be something really better which uh, gives more benefit and probably um, then we will switch to this. So I don't think that the growth for the repository size now is a problem. There was also a question of migrating the whole history because the seven gigabytes in the uh, subversion um, repository is because we converted the whole uh, uh, history of our port tree from the first commit until now. And there were a lot of discussion about this and in the end the, we decided that the history is too important for us to just skip. N you, you still could have the old history in CVS, but it's inconvenient to, if you work on a problem to uh, yeah, look at the history in the SVN and look at the history in the CVS. And so we decided to keep the history and live with this 7 gig repository. Um, the other thing was the uh, CVS ex exporter. My initial goal was to uh, yeah, nuke the CVS. Um, and CVS up, uh, but uh, we saw that many users still use CVS up. There is Portsnap, which is probably convenient for most users, but still the user use, use CVS up. And also we don't have a mirror mode like uh, for CVS up with SVN. So we decided to have uh, the CVS con uh, exporter like Source still has. So what's the status of the conversion of the FreeBSD ports to subversion? There is a test rep repository set up with on one on my server. Well, in fact, it's a server provided by Daniel. He isn't here, so bummer. And the repository is open for all committers. And the goal is uh, that committers just commit something in this repository to, to, uh, uh, to test if things work, if the uh, CVS exporter works. There is also a documentation on our uh, wiki. Um, yeah, if you're interested, read this documentation and uh, yeah, give me some feedback. And the other thing is the, the port tree grown, was grown for 18 years now. We have a lot of tools around the port tree which uses CVS and all these tools need to be converted to some version. So there is still a lot of tasks open. Um, if you're bored and you have some free time, uh, to kill, um, take a look at this task list and yeah, convert something to a uh, subversion. Because of that, we don't have a timeline yet when the switch will, uh, will be done. My goal is to do it this year, 
my real goal is to do it uh, until this summer, but it really depends uh, how, uh, how much uh, people test the current test repository. And uh, yeah, uh, and uh, how many people work on that to convert all our tools. And I've prepared a small history lesson. Um, we see on the August 21st in uh, 49 was the first port commit. Um, I was still a random teenager at the time, <laughs> but uh, we we this was the first commit to the port infrastructure. And if you look at the file, we already had things which we still use, like um, the variable use gmake to um, build something with gmake or new configure. And also the targets, uh, the, the make targets, like extract, configure, build, install packages, we still have nowadays. And that was the first uh, infrastructure commit. And the first ports added, uh, were Emacs, Jove, and Bash. Well, <laughs> if you look at the make file, it was pretty simple at that time. It just had uh, this, this name, uh, use gmake, and new configure, and the home location where, where to fetch. This was re uh, renamed uh, later to master side, as we know nowadays. Oh. So now we are able to install our packages uh, with the binary package tool. We have uh, a way to build our own packages. But why we should build our own packages? Because they are there and with package sets we will provide uh, frequent updates. There is one, re uh, or one of the reasons is if, if you want to build your package with uh, certain options. We currently uh, support options and you have two vari variables to set if you want the option. It's with something or without something. The current problem is that the value might not be checked and the usage is inconsistent. So if you want to be sure that you don't use X on your system, you have to use uh, with X equal no, uh, without X equal yes, and probably with no X equal yes, and uh, uh, without no X equal no or false. And yet, yeah, it's uh, pretty a mess. Also, if two uh, options are mutually exclusive, currently the maintainer has to make sure that in the make file there is some magic to detect this and um, yeah, there, but now there is a new options uh, code which is uh, available on uh, the site from Baptist. You can try it, it works. And there are different types of options. There are simple options on and off, like I want X, yes, no, on, off. There are multiple options. Um, if you have uh, multiple options, but you have to choose at least one. And there are single options. You have a different set of options, but you only can choose one because they are mutually exclusive. Um, the package in G makes sure that, uh, or has some logic to check this before. So you don't have to have this all, uh, these whole constructions in your make files. You can also have an optional descript, uh, description. The maintainer can set the default set of options. And you as a user um, are able to um, define system-wide options. So let's have a look at options in G. This is how it currently looks like, yeah. Yeah, five minutes. This is how it currently looks like. You see here for Firefox, all the options are switched off. And if we go to ports, which already has options NG, or it's just a demonstration port, but now we here have uh, the, the options defined. These are single options. You can say um, this opt one, or yeah, you can name it as you like, but 
um, this is the opt one I want this, I want X, I want NLS, I want whatever. You can have this multi, we have two groups of multi, so from this group you have to choose at least one, but you can choose multiple of, and there are single options, this SEL1 for example, of these three options you have to choose, at, that you have to choose one. Then there is the option default. This is the default set the maintainer thinks is the same uh, default set. And there is also a possibility to exclude global options because if a port will break with a certain global options, it's possible to exclude it here. And we see the option one here has a, a additional description. So if we make uh, make show config, we see now all the op uh, options. So from group one, we have to choose at least one. From group two, also at least one. From selection one, we have to choose only one. So in this, uh, in, in this example, I have uh, chosen two, so it's not possible. And so there is also a new make target, make check config. And yeah, it now says um, for selection one, I. Uh, I selected two options, this is not possible, run make config again and it will work. Um, the dispatch is in a pretty decent state and I think it should be committed soon. Um, options in G is backward compatible with the old options framework. So if you, uh, if the, once the options in G code is uh, committed to the, uh, to the port three, you still could use, or all the ports still use the old uh, um, uh, options code, uh, it's still provide, this support is still provided. So conclusions, we have quite some big uh, tasks this year, uh, but all of them are a huge uh, improvement for the FreeBSD port 3, or at least in my opinion. And I'm really looking forward that all these tools uh, came to a productive state and gets committed. Um, all these tools uh, can still, uh, can or needs testers. So um, all the code is uh, public available, just try it out. And uh, really, have a look at Package and G. I converted all my servers to Package and G and it works perfect and it's way more convenient than the old package tool. So yeah, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for organizing this conference and I'd like to thank uh, Baptiste and uh, Irvin that I was able to um, yeah, copy some of them slides of their presentation. <laughs>